This is going to be two reviews in one video. And this may be my longest delayed video so far. Because 13 months ago, I reviewed Giuseppe Gerano's The Jehovah Witnesses Bible, an evaluation of the text of the New World Translation. And I had some good things to say about this book, as well as some not go so good things to say about it. Since then, Giuseppe has updated this book, and so I want to cover that update. And then I'm also going to review his book, 53, The Death of the Messiah, Foreseen and Explained. Two books in one video. We got this. And I also want to say sorry, Giuseppe, for taking so long to share an update on my review of your update of your review of the New World Translation. Welcome to Rev Reads, your home for book reviews from the perspective of a pastor. If you're new to the channel and want to discover more books that will help you to better present the gospel to an unbelieving world, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with my most recent reviews. And if you're a regular to the channel, please like this video, share it with other people so that they can learn about Giuseppe's important work to help draw us into the importance of Jesus's death, and then also share his work with others in the world. Let's cover the Jehovah's Witness Bible first. In what I thought was an excellent evaluation of the New World Translation, Giuseppe can help you know what passages in the Bible a Jehovah's Witness is going to cover to convince you to enter their cult. And he also shows what passages in their own Bible, in the New World Translation, still go against Jehovah's Witness beliefs. Why that is so important is that this means you don't need to pull a Bible translation off your shelf that they're going to view as corrupt in order to show them their errors. You can show it from their own Bible. And what's best about this book, what I love the most, is the table of contents, uh, because it just gives you a list of passages that they're going to cover. So if that Jehovah's Witness knocks at your door, you have a handy reference to go to in order to confront their arguments. Now, when I reviewed this before, my complaint in the book was that it simply had too many typos. Giuseppe doesn't speak English as his first language, and sometimes that comes through a little bit in his English work. I typically don't have that problem with that in his other books because I just appreciate him providing his writings for us in English, so I want to be a little bit gracious for some of those errors that pop up now and again. But in a book like this, where you could possibly be showing it to a Jehovah's Witness and say, saying, here, look look at what this says here. Or look at how this contradicts the, the Greek and the other translations that you have, where you might be actually showing this book to a Jehovah's Witness. I think some of those language issues need to be cleaned up. And thankfully, Giuseppe did that with his update. So if you get the Jehovah's Witness Bible, an evaluation of the New World Translation, make sure you get the fourth edition from 2022. That's the one that cleans up all those typos. But if you're one who is at a loss when you are confronted by a Jehovah's Witness at your door, this book is a must have for you. I'd encourage you to read through it once and then keep it near your front door as a handy reference. The second book I want to review is entitled 53, The Death of the Messiah Foreseen and Explained. This book is a short walk through Isaiah chapter 53. And the prophecy of Jesus Christ found in that beloved book that was written and proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah. Coming in at 100 pages, uh, don't expect this book to dive deeply into the Hebrew or many weighty philosophical or theological issues with Isaiah chapter 53. But instead, I, I took 53 kind of as reading this book made it feel like you went and got a, a good cup of coffee and you sat down with a friend and the two of you discussed and walked through together Isaiah 53. Just going verse by verse through this book, Giuseppe uncovers what he finds significant in each verse, how it relates to other passages in the scripture, and also what it means to him. In this book, he tells his own testimony about how he came to faith and believed in the reality of the prophecies of Jesus Christ, which came hundreds of years before the cross. And then when he gets into the meat of this book, it actually reminded me of something I didn't really expect. It reminded me a little bit of reading the early apostolic fathers. I don't say that to say like, oh, I'm putting Giuseppe up on a level of Polycarp or Clement or Justin Martyr. Uh, but what it reminded me of is that once you get into the meat in this book, this book is just filled with quotations from the Bible. And if you're reading those early apostolic fathers, one thing that you will see is that they are filled with so, so many quotations 
quotations, typically, especially from the Old Testament, normally in their writings, all throughout. And so Giuseppe's kind of doing the same thing in this book as he's showing how other passages in Scripture relate to Jesus' death and specifically this prophecy in Isaiah chapter 53. For instance, he has a discussion on Jesus as the ram caught in the thicket taking Isaac's place in Genesis 22. And it was great how he covered Abraham's faith and friendship with God and why God's request to sacrifice Isaac. In Abraham's world, that request really wasn't all that unusual when you learn about the twisted behaviors of the ancient Near East gods. And so for us, that seems like the shocking and unusual part of Genesis 22. But for Abraham's world, the shocking part was God providing the sacrifice in the place of Isaac at the end. And it really highlights how our God is a God of compassion and love and grace who is so distinct and separate from the gods of Abraham's day. And God continues to be the separate, compassionate, glorious one even in our own day and age. Now, as Giuseppe was pulling from all of these passages in Scripture, there were a few chapters where I felt like, Man, Giuseppe, you could have spent a little bit more time discussing Isaiah 53 than you actually did. So don't expect this book to be a detailed commentary on every verse and every phrase, because that really wasn't his goal. But if you're looking for a friend to walk with you through Isaiah 53, someone that you can just listen to as they discuss what this chapter means to them, how it relates to other passages in the Bible, and the beauty of how it was fulfilled in Christ, this would be a good brief work for you. And I think the timing that you would read this book also would ideally be in the 12 days leading up to Good Friday. Uh, this book has 12 short chapters. You could read one a day, make it through it in 12 days, no problem, and read this book to, to set your mind and prepare your spirit for the remembrance and the celebration that Jesus died for us. So thank you again, Giuseppe, for your work in writing and sharing it with the church. 53 is a very good book for a discussion amongst brothers. And then an evaluation of the text of the New World Translation is an even better tool to help us defend our faith against the confusion of the Jehovah's Witnesses.